these kata, right? And um, you guys are learning one, two, three, and you guys know the kata is supposed to be fluent one motion. You already know that. That's not right. You've done that. And um, but we learn them one, two, three, one, two, three. How do you translate that? The, 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 what we're going to talk about now is how to translate that these lessons of kata and waza and traditional Japanese martial arts, how does that translate into reality self-protection? Because again, like we talked about earlier, the ninja is known for being a badass. I mean, they're known as one of the most well-known historical assassins in the world. Do you know what I mean? So they're not, I mean, they're known for being badass in combat, life or death. You know what I mean? And how do you translate these old techniques of kisarigama or, or bojutsu or whatever we're doing? How does that directly link? Because when you learn the kata, one, two, three, okay, then you learn it one, two, okay, then you get down fluent enough to learn it one, but then what do you go, where do you go from there? That's really the question, isn't it? Where do you go from there? Because do you, does the kata quit? The one thing that you cannot separate from traditional martial arts, which you cannot subtract, excuse me, uh, is intensity. There are lots of people, you know, on the internet that have a massive book collection and they know all the books and they have all, they've read all the books and they know this scroll and that scroll or they've watched all these YouTube videos or they can do all these things, right? Uh, and they, they train in martial arts and they know all these different things. But then you got, you know, Bob up the road Bob don't have a martial art book. Bob don't give a fuck. Bob is Bob. He goes to the corner, he drinks, he gets into a fight, he gets a scrap on, he whoops somebody's ass and he goes home. So where's the disconnect? Because you have so many people that train in traditional martial arts that when they face against Bob, they might get their ass whooped. Even though they've trained for years, they have a belt or whatever, they got all these good books and they've rest, watched the documentaries, they have all this knowledge. Bob ain't got a book collection. Bob don't go to the dojo. So what is the thing that's stopping a traditional martial artist? You know what I mean? I'm talking about traditional martial arts, not sport martial arts. We're talking about MMA or kickboxing or, you know, kind of, I'm talking about traditional Budo, traditional Japanese martial arts. What's stopping that person, that individual, from being effective in that realm? And the answer to that is intensity. You cannot subtract intensity. When you get into a match, when you guys get into a fight, the number one thing you have to do is match intensity. If you do not match their intensity and their aggressiveness in some way, whether it's technical or whatever, if you don't match that, you will lose. There are people who get into sparring matches all the time and we see it in sparring. One person just like, rah, and they just go and go and go. And they win a lot of their matches just because they're intense. And the other person they're going against is not intense. They're not stepping up and matching the intensity, right? And it's not that the other person don't have adequate skills. It's not matching the intensity. So when you guys are, when you guys watch these, you do these kata, you need to not only do it in, okay, three, two, one, or one, two, and then one, but then once you get it as one, you need to practice doing it really fast, very intense, very to the point with intent. Because then, then you could take that and translate that into reality. But if you don't train with intensity, you will lose with, against intensity. There is no other way around that. You have to be able to flip the switch. And that, that, and you know, that sounds really bad because then you got this, this idea that the, the people really buy into the, well, they buy into this, I don't know if dogma is the correct word, but they, they buy into this idea that there's no aggression, no intensity, right? Just, just, you know, feel the sun, feel the moon, and I'm going to win no matter what. I'm going to become victorious when... This, when Bob, we'll use Bob as an example, Bob comes after you. That's not going to happen. Bob is a hateful bastard, very strong, very big. All he knows is how to do is beat you up. He only knows how to win. And if you don't match intensity, you will lose to intensity. It, it is one of those things. Now, tech, good technique does overpower intensity. 
I mean, you, you have better technique, you have better technique. But if you don't do that technique with the correct amount of intensity against an intense attack, you will lose to that, right? I promise you, you get one guy off the street who's been in 100 street fights, who's just been in a bunch of scraps, tough as shit, and you get someone that can throw the perfect jab or the perfect hook, you know what I mean? And they do it very calm and they control their breathing. They're gonna get their ass whooped. It doesn't matter how good they, they can do one technique. They're not matching intensity. So you have to be able to match the energy of what's coming in. At a minimum, you have to be able to match that intensity. And we, we always heard me say, you always wanna do one more than what they are, right? So if you're sparring, let's say you're a black belt, you might be doing a sparring match for someone that's like a yellow belt, right? That they're maybe the first time they've ever sparred. They've never sparred a day in their life, never been in a scrap ever. They're yellow belt, they just got their first belt. And you're a black belt and you've been in the dojo for years. Well, when you start sparring, you might say, shit, these guys are in, in your head. You can check your own checks and balances. You're like, okay, they're like an intense level one. Well, then I'm only going to go at a two. Because hauling off and whooping somebody in a sparring match in the dojo, it does you no good, and it doesn't do them any good. Because they have to develop their skills too, right? So you want to win, you want to practice that part, but you also want to practice control. That's another reason why you want to be able to just do a little bit more intensity than what you got coming at you. Because then you can learn how to control your own intensity against an adversary. A lot of times people can't control it, right? And so they get into this argument and they just, they have to be so hateful. Like one thing growing up, and maybe I'm speaking my age right now, but when I grew up, people got into fights after school all the time. You know, I'm not a saint. I did too. You know what I'm saying? But, and I'm not condoning that behavior. You know, or my, you know I got spanked growing up when I did wrong, you know, that kind of thing. And, and again, I'm not trying to, in front of the camera here, say you should go spank your kids, right? But it was a different time. And I think growing up playing like games like dodgeball that you're not in schools anymore or whatever, you know, you do learn without being taught a level of what it takes to hurt someone. And when you learn that, you get a little bit, you learn a little respect. If I do this, they're going to get hurt. Someone else is going to get hurt. Or if I do this and they do this, I'm going to get hurt. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, everyone is susceptible to an ass whooping. I don't care who you are, right? But nowadays, it just seems like kids don't talk to one another. There's no physicality anymore. Everyone's constantly input, no output. I'm mean, asking kids all the time. They got their iPads and their iPhones and they're doing this and it's constantly input, input, input. There's no output. They got, there's nothing to get it out. It's all in. And then when they get into a fight, it is malicious. It's like the meanest, most hateful things you can say. It's like they don't go one over. It's like they got to go times 100. Do you catch what I'm saying? Because they don't have any damn control. And they didn't learn that because they never learned a fundamental lesson is they can get an ass whooping too. Do you know what I'm saying? So when you're learning the kata, where does this go? Where's the full circle? Learning the kata is one thing, but understanding that you have to do it with intent and be intense is another. And then taking that intensity and applying it into your martial movement is the true essence of what we're trying to create. I want you guys to be able to be intense in what you do. If you can't be intense, it'll be very difficult for you to be able to prevail. Does that make sense? And a lot of times I think people, they do martial arts not because they are martial artists. Because if you're a martial artist, you would want to train. You would want to do the push-ups and the sit-ups and the squats and, and strengthen your body and hit the bags and, and do your sparring and work on your throws and work on your locks and work on the waza and work on the kata and, and get the kudin. in. And you would want to do the art. If you're a martial artist, you would want to do the art. But a lot of people call themselves martial artists and they're not. They're what, I, they're what I call martial enthusiasts, right? They're enthusiastic about martial arts. They enjoy martial arts and they like to learn techniques, but they don't like to train. 
right? It's like, it's like, oh, I want to learn a new technique. Why am I going to get a technique when you can't do the 10 I already showed you? Do you know, you know what I mean? It's like, th th that's the martial enthusiast. You know what I mean? It's like you get the martial arts researcher that wants to know everything but can't do shit. You know, but they're really good at talking. Right? So, but getting away from the martial enthusiasts and getting away from these martial arts researchers or whatever, if you're going to be a martial artist, you have to understand your level of intensity. Right? The first cone, you know, in the Samurai Kokoro is know thyself. So if you know that my intensity level is going to be this, and, you, and you're like, there's no way my intensity level in a self-defense situation is going to outdo the person that's in front of you because maybe you just, you just don't have a lot of fire in you, then you need to make damn sure that you have a, for, a force multiplier to effectively defend yourself in that situation. A, for, a force multiplier is doing the same thing at the same speed, at the same intensity, but the outcome is more. An example, if I have this, this is a Hanbo. But let's say this Hanbo, I put a 12 inch nail on the end of it. Just big old needle, right? If my daughter as a 13 year old walked up and punched Bob, right? This big guy that we've already kind of talked about, probably wouldn't hurt Bob one damn bit. But if she took the same force and took this with a 12 inch needle on it and did the same thing, it's gonna go 12 inches into his fucking gut cavity, right? So that's what I mean by a force multiplier. It's taken the same force and multiplied the pain. The outcome is multiplied by using the same force. Just catch what I'm saying by that? So you have to know yourself. You have to know where your intensity is. You have to know, my, are you gonna be the person that's gonna go gung-ho? Or are you gonna be the person that's gonna bait people in? And maybe you're gonna be more of a defensive fighter rather than be this intense offensive fighter or whatever the situation is. But whatever it is, you need to do that with the same intensity as them. You could be a defensive fighter with the same intensity as someone who's an offensive fighter. Even though the viewing, people viewing the fight might not see that, right? Because everyone sees who's talking shit. They just automatically think they're the more intense person. But that's not always true. Same thing being a defensive guy. That doesn't always mean that being defensive isn't the same intensity, but you have to have the same intensity if you're going to be defensive. Set them up. Give them something and then go after it. Don't just wait for them to give you something. Bait them to go after something, take it away, and then come in for something, right? But one thing I see a lot of in the world of traditional martial arts, not just, you know, you know sparring matches or hanbu or people in the online dojo or budo nikai or whatever. I'm talking in general, traditional Japanese martial arts. A lot of times you see these people that just, they don't train with intensity. You know what I'm saying? And you have to learn, you have to learn how to turn it on. Just saying you all learn how to turn it off. There's a balance of everything, right? But if you don't learn how to turn it on, you'll never learn how to control it. And then when it's on, you can put yourself in a whole lot of, in a whole world of shit, right?